is a rematch from last year's NFC Wild Card round between the Green Bay Packers and the Washington Redskins. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. is James Starks and this defense feeling the encouragement they stop him at the line of scrimmage on the first play of the afternoon so nothing there but maybe you blame that on the blocking yeah at some point you got to win at the point of attack and on that play that was all the defense they made it happen a play fake to Starks now Rodgers and Ty Montgomery has it complete. And yeah, that right there will set him back a bit on the offensive holding penalty. And you know who you want to pressure after a penalty like that? The guy who just committed the foul. You want to see if he's going to keep his head down or if he's going to get his head right back into the game. I'd send a blitz at him right away and see if he holds up. Second down, here's Rodgers. Caught left side by Cobb. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders, hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive player in another zone. And the Redskins have an extra man in the secondary here on third. On third and long, it's Rodgers. He's got time. And that is incomplete. Well, no second guessing the call here. It was third and long, so throwing the football was probably the smart play to try and pick it up. But they don't get it, and now the defense goes off the field feeling pretty good about themselves, gaining some momentum as they force them into a likely punting situation. Now the second-year man from Buffalo, Jake Shum, on to punt. Back deep for the Redskins, Jamison Crowder. And take it right on the 30. Oh, he will not go down. Have to retake those ankles. A nice job on the return there. 16 yards. And the Redskins will take possession for the first and 10. the first carry for Matt Jones. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And there, Matt Jones, the ball carrier. Last year, only 3.4 yards per carry. Did have some explosive plays, though, in the passing game. And they think that they're going to get him in the running game from him now as well because the volume of carries for him will increase. Let's go! Second down, Cousins. Pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Mike Daniels coming hard that time. He's able to run him down for a loss of 12. Big sack on second down. Now the offense needs to convert here on third. Here we go now. Green 39. Third and long for Cousins. And he drops this off to Thompson complete. It'll be a gain of 11, and it'll be fourth down. Well, that's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So now here's the third-year man from Oklahoma, Tress Way, on to punt it. And out of bounds, 
sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. they kind of got to look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. In trouble and the ball's out. It's in the end zone loose. And he is not going to get away. The rush was too strong. And this is going to wind up a safety. Well, we, we thought these two defenses, they might come to play. One has already come to play here. A safety for the opening points of the game. Brandon, let's pile this play away because if it turns out to be a tight game, who knows? This could wind up being the difference. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well, and they free kick it from the 20 now. Now here's Ross. And here come the Redskins now. And they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guys a little bit I don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. Just like us <laughs> calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three now and out. And have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first time. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> Throwing his cousins out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Give him seven on the play, and it'll make it a second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Mike Daniels in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. Cousins from the gun on third. Finding time. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. Back live, Charles Davis to my right. I'm Brandon Gauden. It's Redskin football to begin quarter number two, but likely not for long as they're in punt formation to kick it away. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And a little too much mustard on that one. It hits a couple yards into the end zone. A missed opportunity there maybe to pin him back. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And a big no-no last time, a safety to make this score 2-0 where we stand now. So see if they can atone for that mistake. You give up points, but on the flip side, the positive side, after you punted the ball away or kicked it away. Defense held. Defense held for you. So there's a little bit of relief there. Now they know they can get back out on the field, run their offense, and try not to put their defense in a bad spot again. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. When Starks played against the Titans, it was his first appearance since week five. He had a knee issue. and. Played 70% of the snaps, but managed just 33 yards on seven carries. And I would like to think that without all the extra injuries the Packers have had at the running back position, they would have eased him in a little bit more, but they had to use him. He's their number one back, the only true running back that they could use in that game. So he had to play a lot, even though he didn't have great production. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. 
Throwing his Rodgers on third down. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. Here's Jacob Shum now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Crowder now to return. That's a 49-yard punt, eight, though, on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with the game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. They'll start out on the ground with Jones. And the hole closes quickly. He gets it across the 35 to the 36-yard line. Tackle there by Clay Matthews. We always like to talk about defense in terms of levels. First level defensive line, second level linebackers, third level defensive backs. On that run, that was what we call a first level run, and it was stopped by a second level player. Let's go! On second down, it's Jones. And very little room to maneuver. He'll get this down to about the 39. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. To throw, Cousins. They'll try and set up the screen. It's complete. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yardage situations, they often become bolder. A long way to go here for the offense on third down after the penalty. Third and 15. From the gun, here's Cousins. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. This is taken at the 15. 12 yards on the return that time. And it'll be Packer football here. First down and 10. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And last drive, three and out. Still a goose egg on the scoreboard. How do they break that goose egg? They've got to find a way to get the ball in the hands of their playmakers, get them some space, and try and make a first down and get some momentum going. It's been a struggle for them throughout the game, and that three and out on the last possession, that told you just how stalled they are on offense. So who will step up here? We'll see. This is Cobb with a catch right side. 15 yards through the air and a first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Now a play fake here on first down. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, Charles, we had one of the best innings, if not the best of the season in Week 10. Will Parks and the Broncos returning that block kick down the sideline. White cleat, white sideline. Did he step out? Hard to tell. Before I even get to that answer, you know what it reminds me of? A hockey player told me a long time ago, you never wrap your stick with white tape because then the goalie can find the puck a lot easier. Wrap it with black tape to try and hide it a little bit. We talk about a white shoe on a white sideline. Hard to tell whether he did or didn't. 
and since the call on the field was he didn't, it had to stand. So that made it really work out well. So if you're going to play, white cleats might be the way to go. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. On first and ten, here's Rodgers. Caught left side by Kyle. It's a gain of five, and that'll make it a second down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Second down now after the pass completion. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Rodgers again now. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he's brought down. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Into the red zone, it's Rodgers. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. yards away and once again the Packers they're back out in front and while that touchdown does not give them an insurmountable lead it's still a lead and that always feels good to a team they'd love to take that into the lockers but a little time left on that clock so some work to do I like that I like how you're guarding against a letdown are you looking forward coaching them up from right up here in the booth After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And it'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as they'll start at the 21-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And what do you think goes on here in this situation? If you got the football, you're trailing, you're back in your own territory with just a little time. Do you try something? You're thinking about jump-starting your team, right? You just mentioned it. They're down. They're trying to get back into the game. But you've got to figure if something goes wrong, you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half. Managing risk, this is a big decision here. All right, here we go. Now Cousins gives to Jones on the delay. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. 
So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And the offense lining up first and ten. Cousins now to throw on first down. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it's a second down. And now they're in the hurry up. Now a second down throw for Cousins. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. First down throw for Cousins. And did he get the feet down? No. They'll say he did not. It's incomplete. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. A second down throw for Cousins. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as they'll try to get three before half. From the left hash, this from 53 yards out. And this is off target to the left. Didn't get there anyway. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. And this is one of the risks you run when you attempt a long field goal. If you miss, the defense takes over the spot of the placement. So now they've got a chance to get one more drive in before halftime. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 319! 319! The final shot before half for Rodgers. He's going to float this one deep right. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked up by the all-pro corner, Josh Norman. And he will be brought down as time has now run out on this first half of action. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. Now it's Chris Thompson on the return. And nice work on the return as he'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Now the Redskins offense, they get set to go back to work here. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. All right, Brandon, you know me as well as anyone. You know I don't usually advocate abandoning things during a game, but here we are in the second half. I think it's time to change things up. Let the running game go a little bit. Let's get to the passing game, and if you still want to get in the hands of the runner, maybe you swing it to him, throw it to him a little bit. Try it that way. Again, it's Jones, and he'll be tackled at about the 35. 
So they get half of what they needed. It'll be third and six upcoming. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable right. with that run. It looks like the Packers have added an extra DB on third down. On third down, Cousins. Out to the left here to Reed. And he's brought down after a good game. A nice gain of 21 yards. That coach is always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end. Let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They'll go again to Jones. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. The evolution of Clay Matthews as a player, it's just one that they're going to end up writing books about. He didn't even start until his senior year at USC. He didn't start in high school. And now he's at all-pro level in the NFL. How about the play he just made there? Yeah, he has certainly made a name for himself. William Clay Matthews III. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. They'll begin the drive on the ground with Starks. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. They tried to run the counter, just that the defense wasn't fooled. And when they're not fooled, you see the end result. Because what you're doing there, you mentioned the counter. You're using your offensive linemen sometimes to pull or move, to influence the defensive front, to go in that direction and create the space back in the other side and block it appropriately. But you're exactly right. Didn't move him, sat there waiting for him and made the play. Give him six on the play, and that'll make it third down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Well, pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? He gets us away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And this one will not be returnable as it sails out of bounds. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, OK, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, 
less of a field goal attempt for him. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. A gain of three, second down. Back now at FedEx Field. It's the Redskins with the football, but trailing here as we get down to the good stuff. Quarter number four. See if they stay on the ground for second down. They'll come out in the pistol. Cousins now on second down. And his throw here is incomplete. Jordan Reed was the intended target. And it's third down. Seven yards remain now on third down. Cousins from the gun on third. They're able to find Garcon. A gain of seven, and they pick up the first. In today's football, where receivers break tackles, make people miss, <laughs> get upfield for the extra yardage, when you see a play like that where it's caught and he's dropped on the spot, that's a big-time play by the defense. First down, here's Cousins. Jackson's got it over the middle. And he's brought down. He got 18 yards out of that one, and it gets him a new set of downs. So here we go, first and 10 now. First and ten, Cousins. Complete to the right. This is Garcon. 23 yards on the play. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Cousins now to throw on first down. And this is caught at the end. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. I think if you pulled defensive backs, they would say the corner route, take that out, make it illegal, because that is so hard to recognize and so hard to adjust because your first move is to not get beat in the middle of the field. And that's how they move you first before they break off to the corner. But then as the wide receiver, great job. It's tough to turn those upfield and go, but he did a great job with it there. Really good balance, really good body control. And how about the end result? A touchdown. This will be caught at about the three. And he is into the end zone for a Washington touchdown. Rashad Ross, 31 yards. And the Redskins have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So here are the Redskins now, an important two-point conversion. Here we go now. Blue Blue Cousins will try and throw. Now look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted, picked off by Micah Hyde. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Returnable here for Davis. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. It gets it over the middle to Cobb. 
And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. 15 yards there on the catch and run. So an excellent throw and an excellent catch there. Zone coverage, which means you just have to find the open areas in between defenders. That's exactly what happened on that play. Fresh set of downs here. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Rodgers now on first down. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. And he's brought down. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. So on that play, defense was in the zone. They ran a crossing route offensively, but the defense there, you got to be good with communication, don't you? You certainly do, and it's not something that is really evident when you watch it on the screen. But everyone's talking, communicating, pointing, and it keeps you from chasing receivers because you have a specific zone you have to cover. When a receiver's in your zone and he crosses to another one, you got to let your guy know. They got a completion there, but I like the discipline they show to stay in their proper areas and then make the tackle. to Starks. Now Rodgers toward the sideline and look at that catch. Dragging the toes and that's going to be a first down. Well done. As if he didn't have enough to think about on that route, the comeback route, coming back to the football and catching it, decided to make sure he toe tapped and kept himself in bounds. And that was spectacular, but on the comeback route, maybe a little easier to deal with the sideline since you, you've got better vision of it? I think that's a great point because you should know exactly where you're going and know how much space you have and make sure you get your feet down. But yeah, coming back to the football, I like it. Good vision. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Back to throw. And Nelson's got it here right side. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll be second down. He'll look to throw, and his throw's going to be incomplete. Keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. They come out here in the eye. Back to throw. Backing up. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And now we're going to get a timeout called by the Redskin defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for the lead in the final stages. And Crosby puts it through. And with a little over a minute to play, they have taken the lead. Now, now then, it's a big kick right there to give them the lead in the fourth. But, Charles, there is still time left for a final drive. Brandon, you know they would have liked to take the clock down just a little bit further, at least under a minute or so. But this was not over yet, especially since they just need a field goal. After the made field goal, now Crosby will do the kickoff duties. This will be taken in at the one. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. They're only in need of a field goal, a decent amount of time on the clock. So tell me if I'm wrong. You don't have to be too panicked here. No, not at all. I agree with you. And this is where your preparation and your confidence comes into play. They've worked on these situations. Yeah, they practice this all oh, the time. They practice it all the time. They know what they want to get done. And in a lot of 
suitcases, the great competitors, they love this situation. They think they can go ahead and get it done. They practiced it. We'll see if practice makes perfect. It's an eight-yard pickup, and it'll be a second down. And quickly, they get to the line. They'll look to throw. Drops it to Jones in the flat. And on the 42-yard line here and brought down there. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Back to throw. Complete to the right. This is Garcon. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll bring up second down. Right. Offense in a good spot here, second and two. And he can't corral it. That would have wrapped it up if he'd been able to hold on. Instead, it brings up third down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. Offense coming up, needing two yards on third down. Here we go now. Green, 39. Here's Cousins. It's caught, Jones, and he's brought down after a good game. And now a timeout coming from the defensive side for the Packers. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So the offense has it first and 10. Now Cousins hands to Jones. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. And Alec Packer's going to take another timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Second down following the run. One man in the backfield, that's Jones. Caught right side, Davis. It's a gain of five on the play, and that's going to lead to a third down. How about the timing on that one? Boy, they were in sync, weren't they? Three-step drop, balls out of his hands, right to the tight end. Nice completion, just like they do it in practice. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. They come out here in the eye. They run it here with Thompson. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Sets up the screen to Jones. And a stiff arm made it a pretty little run. Not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. 
for a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Now whistles come in, we're gonna get a timeout here by the offense. That'll be their third and final stoppage here as we step aside. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to almost certainly win the football game. And his kick is good. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. So it's not quite over yet, but you have to figure they pretty well got this one on ice now. And Brandon, I can't help but marvel at how calm these field goal kickers seem to be in situations like this. You know I'm shaking up here like a leaf, and I don't have to <laughs> kick it. We're following the made field goal for three. Hopkins now to kick it off. Here comes Montgomery now to return it. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Look at the clock. Everyone knows the situation. Probably time here for one final play. And we know what that play is going to be. It's got to be some sort of Hail Mary throwing it towards the end zone and hoping someone can catch it or catch it off of a tip. Think back to 2015. Didn't we see Green Bay pull that off yes, once in the season, season? Once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. So stranger things have happened. It'll be interesting to see what the defensive strategy is about who they put on the field to try and knock that ball away. Second down now after the incompletion. One final try for Rodgers. We've seen this before. He's going to let it fly. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end. But they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. <laughs>